Are you saying you were entrapped by Sergeant McCall? Yes, I most assuredly am. Brutally cut up. Butchered. Some sort of satanic rite. He's a killer! A killer! If you don't go away, Brad, I'm gonna call the police. I am the police! It calls for the sacrifice of the young a woman. How many times I gotta tell you, Claire? When you're good, you don't need luck. Previously on City of Passion, Part 1. Listen, I am Warwick Unger, Judge Warwick Unger of the Superior Court. You're making a bad arrest here, friend. This is pure entrapment. Take my word for it, Judge. It isn't. When I'm almost out the door, Kane brings up Unger. He wants me to drop the charges. He didn't give a damn about the teletype violation. This whole thing was a charade for Unger. The guy was trying to intimidate me the whole time. Lieutenant, I did not call you to open up a debate. I have read the report. You discussed this with Sergeant McCall? Yes, I have. Kane's unfit for command. And I'm gonna nail him. You be careful, Johnny. A couple of months ago, this guy with the pot-marked face came and picked me up at the Alvarado Motel. They took Debbie, and the man who owned the house was there. He had a knife and killed Debbie. I work out there, and it's a sewer. By the end of my watch, I am so keyed up. I'm so wound up in... Kathy, I just got to unwind. And you can't unwind with me anymore, is that it? Any sign of forced entry? None. No evidence of any tampering with any of the locks. Maybe he had a key. Maybe she let him in. The murder seems incidental to the rape. Other than that, the M.O. is identical to the eight other rapes. The semen on the sheet is type O. The shoe prints are size 14. It all adds up to Bigfoot. We may as well face it. Our serial rapist is now a murderer. I want you four to all work together on this. He is also responsible for the rape homicide that occurred last night. Do you have any firm leads at this time? Sex crimes and homicide detectives are actively pursuing a number call. of leads. Yes, uh, the specifics of which I, I cannot you. discuss. Well, if you are the man I'm looking for, then uh, where can I find you? I'm closer than you think, Judy. Like where? You'll find out soon enough. Really? Well, I'll tell you what. I'd really like to meet you. I bet you would. He hung up. What do you got? Well, I'll find me again. Thanks. This guy's calling from your house. Here. He's gone. Nothing looks disturbed. He's 
smell that cologne? Yes, and I smelled it before. That's Bigfoot. He was here. Brad, put out a code for get rid of the Air Force. Maybe we can turn this thing around on Bigfoot. Turn it around? Well, he doesn't know that we know he called from here. Maybe he'll be back. And now, City of Passion, part two. Mr. Trepp, please keep this confidential. Thank you. I think we've got him. The four victims I checked all used the same appraisal service when they bought their home. Image market appraisals. How did you know? I thought you were checking realtors. It's the same company that appraised my house. Come on, let's go round up the troops. Are you crazy? You pick them up now? All you got is a DA reject. For God's sake, Skipper, what more do we need? Every victim's home, including McCall's, was appraised by the same guy. Lloyd Fredericks, a male Caucasian, 6'2", 220 pounds, DOB 11, 18, 51. That makes him Bigfoot. What about the stuff you don't have? His blood type, for example. Well, we do have that, Charlie. The Navy says he has a blood type of O. Also, he wears a size 13 and a half shoe. If the shoe fits, Charlie. I still say the DA is going to throw this one out. All you've got is circumstantial evidence. Meanwhile, what we're doing is alerting him. I agree with Charlie. I think we'd have put a 24-hour surveillance on Fredericks and see what his next move is. And we have a pretty good idea where that will be. Yeah, well, I'm ready. Not to mention I'm covered. Not if we put the surveillance on Fredericks. Well, come on, we're on a budget here. We only got so much money, so many men, so many hours. Now, we either cover McCall or we cover Fredericks. Which is it going to be? Cover Fredericks. I'll change my locks. Yeah, well. In that case, we're going to need a 24-hour, around-the-clock double-team, Charlie. Sorry. One team at a time, four hours at a time. That's all I'm going to be able to sell Kane. I wish it was otherwise, but it isn't, so let's get on it. Judge Dunker, do you have any comment to make about your arrest in Hollywood? My arrest, Miss Pedroza, was an outrage. Obviously politically motivated. And I've asked for a full public airing. Are you saying you were entrapped by Sergeant McCall? Yes, I most assuredly am. I was flagged down by a woman who, for all I know, was having car problems. And what followed was a pure case of entrapment. Is it true you've stepped down from the bench? No, it is not. I am on leave while the circumstances are being investigated. I'm sure it won't take District Attorney Ben Dici very long to settle it. Thank you very much. Judge, can you tell us why you were in the area to begin with? Whose great idea was it to give us the point with Fredericks from 3 to 7? Well, it doesn't make any difference. We'll have breakfast at your house. Oh, great. Why is that? Well, because uh, we haven't changed the locks, and uh, besides, you get the couch tonight. Great. Right back. Yeah, I'll be waiting. 
yard line. First and goal to go. Just shy of the Pittsburgh six. I need a room for an hour. You got to know from your mother. As a matter of fact, I do. You know, it's really funny how she looks like Andrew Jackson. Look at that. Way too low. And don't mess up the sheet. Don't worry. Maybe we should do something that doesn't require us getting undressed. Whatever turns you on. Look, I really like you, but I got expenses, you know? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. How much? Fifty bucks. Fifty more? I just gave you twenty. Hey, what's going on around here? Police, open the door. Oh, my God. He's lying. He's a killer. He's a killer. Window. I'm calling the police, you little whore! What the? Go away, Brad! What's going on? Attorney. An attorney? Who? Mike Snow. Snow? He's no divorce attorney. Oh, he is now. You're crazy. Open the door. If you don't go away, Brad, I'm going to call the police. The police? I am the police, and this is my house. What is wrong with you? You! You're what's wrong with me. You're never going to change. And I cannot live like this anymore. Just get out of my life. Go away. Go away? Okay, you got it. Like that, go away. You bet your attitude, I'll go away. High and dry, that's how I'm gonna leave you. We'll see who can't take it. Right?
this Bill and Bob. Let's get out of here. This is L-56 relinquishing point to L-37. Roger, L-56. Have a nice day. Staff 1, contact Command Central on the Delta frequency. This is Staff 1. This is Command Central, Staff 1. Advise you use the private entrance upon arrival at base. Code 20P. This better be good, Lieutenant. There are five TV crews waiting for you in the lobby, sir. What the hell's happened? Well, as you know, Judge Warwick Unger was arrested in a 647B during a Hollywood vice. So why week. should that bring out five TV crews? Commander Kane ordered the charges against him dropped. The charges dropped? If there was something wrong with that arrest, why wasn't I notified? You weren't notified, Chief, because there's nothing wrong with the arrest. Politics is involved. Get Kane over here. like half the press in the city's out there. They must have heard about Brad being thrown out last night. What's going down, Lieutenant? Oh, Kane's got something stirring. What's the status on Fredericks? Well, we watched her come home from work, and then uh, we watched him go to work. He was still there when we were replaced by Denley and Roswell. Well, I talked to the Department of Defense this morning. Fredericks got the boot from the Navy for aggravated assault against a woman. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Rape isn't a crime about sex anyway. It's a crime of violence. Sergeant O'Hearn? That's O'Hearn. You Sergeant Navarro? No, actually, I'm Ernie Benedetto. All right, look. When I call your name, raise your hand, all right? Navarro. I just want the publishers clearing house sweepstakes, right? <laughs> O'Hearn. McCall. Yeah. Nothing for uh, Benedetto? As a uh, officer of the county and the court, I serve you these summons. I suggest you contact an attorney. Now, could someone point me toward Captain Charles Devane? Certainly. The petition of Catherine Navarro seeks an interlocutory judgment and dissolution of marriage from respondent Bradley Adams Navarro. The petition of Catherine Navarro will present evidence that shows the police department under the current administrative and executive direction of Chief of Police Edward Stanmore, who supervises Captain Charles Devane, who did on or about March 1983 assign Detective Sergeant Dee McCall, and did again on or about July 1985 assign Detective Catherine O'Hearn, both females, as police partners to respondent Bradley Adam Navarro. In so doing, the respondents had knowledge that respondents McCall and O'Hearn were females of considerable physical attraction. This willful act resulted in respondent Bradley Adams Navarro developing an abnormal and unusual appetite for sex. Which did cause the decline and subsequent collapse of normal relations with the petitioner. I can hear Mike Snow laughing. It's not going to be a bitter divorce, right? She's a reasonable woman, right? $974,000? This is crazy, Brad. I haven't worked with you in over four years. Hey, Navarro, there's a dial of divorce for turning your call on 2-6. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about seeing an attorney, but I don't think Kathy Navarro is serious about this lawsuit. Yeah, I think it's an interesting case. <laughs> you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. I mean, come on, it's a well-known fact that police officers spend more time with one another than they do with their families. I mean, think about the wedding vows. I mean, they're a distant second to the unspoken bond between two partnered police officers. I mean, you and I are supposed to die for one another, right? Charlie asked me to go to internal affairs over Kane dropping the charges against Judge Unger. Yeah. What would you do? Go, tell the truth. 
Yeah, that was my first instinct. But you know what it's like after a cop goes to IA. Hard enough being a woman on this force without being labeled a snitch. Lincoln 56, be advised McCall's meeting at Parker Center is confirmed for 0800, room 306. Well, there you go. L56, message received. Let me have the... This is L56, request an update on the APB on Stacy Tyler, please. Stand by, Lincoln 56. You worried about this kid, huh? Yeah, I think I'm all she's got. Lincoln 56, there's been no response on the want on Stacy Tyler. L56, Roger. Here we go. <laughs> He made us? No, oh, he needs a pair of binoculars to see us. Maybe he got spooked by one of the other surveillance teams. Maybe. Maybe he's gotten suspicious of any car he doesn't recognize. Yeah, perhaps. If you want to drink it all, Jamie, steal your own. Aren't you afraid of Scarface? Sure am. So I'm gonna go to Vegas as soon as I can get my stuff out of the motel. It's a lot warmer in Vegas, you know. Somebody watching the motel. She hasn't picked up her stuff yet. I'll get her. For you, and they told me to call them when I saw you again. I don't want no trouble, so I'm putting you on notice. Can you at least give me 20 minutes, Sam? 10. I don't suppose I could have a refund. You suppose right. Now it's nine minutes. Okay.
your mail, McCall. Thanks. How come you're not with Hunter? I uh, had a meeting down at Parker Center. He's using his cape. He's going in. Roger, 5-6. We're on Elm at Chattel Drive. We show entrance at 0912. Yeah, he spent 18 minutes at the last house he was at. Lincoln 56, code 1. Lincoln 56, go ahead. Lincoln 56, 7 Adam 43 is standing by at the Galaxy Motel on La Brea. They have a 187, a female juvenile. A business card with your name found on the body. Zebra 20, I know I got 20 more minutes, but take the point, will ya? What's the problem, 5-6? Just take the point. <laughs> gun in one of her bags. Put a make eye away. Any witnesses? Yeah, a guy in a service station across the street. Don't touch anything, I'll be right back. Yes, big ugly man. Park here, a watch motel. I tell him, go. He say, get lost. I get lost. Did you see him go into that motel right over there? I see him go. I see him come back. What kind of car is he driving? Lou, a Lou Ford. I smell rat, you know? So, I look at number on plate. 540, then customer blow horn. I go, I come back, car gone. You sure it was 540? I'm very sure. You remember the letters? No. Can you remember if they were before or after the numbers? After. After. Good. Bag your hands, I want nail clippings. We'll take, the, take the sheets. And we'll also do an anhydrous spray on the body. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. What? Are you sure about that? Give me the address. OK. Thanks. Homicide, McCall. McCall, Hunter. Stacy Tyler's dead. We found a gun. Guess who it's registered to? Your very good friend, Judge Warwick Unger. I'll pick you up in 15 minutes. Uh, I think you'd probably have better luck with the judge if you went by yourself. Maybe you're right. I'll call you. Yeah. Judge is in the garden. He'll be with you in a moment. Thank you. May I help you? Well, I hope so. I'm Sergeant Hunter, Metropolitan Police. Well, what do you want? Well, I'd like to talk to you about uh, a gun you own. A gun? Yeah. Stay. Yeah, it appears that uh, it 
which showed up in the purse of a 17-year-old prostitute by the name of Stacy Tyler. She was murdered this afternoon. Oh, was she killed with that gun? Oh, no. She was uh, brutally cut up, butchered in some sort of uh, satanic rite. There was a pentagram carved on her stomach. Well, it looks like a gun that I keep in my garage. If it is, it was obviously stolen, and I was unaware that it was missing. You keep a gun in your garage? Sergeant, you are obviously trying to implicate me in a serious crime of which I have no knowledge. And that would make two false charges by you people. And I believe that I am being harassed. I'm not here to harass you, Judge, really. I just thought you'd like to tell me why your gun turned up in Stacy's purse. Get out. And the next time you talk to me, the first words out of your mouth better be the Miranda warning. A movie more I should you. Damien. Good boy. Good boy. Lincoln 5-6, patch me through to Sergeant McCall, please. Homicide, McCall. McCall, you know anything about the occult? What? That's what I figure. I'll pick you up in 15 minutes. It's all right, Howard. I know the man. Go on up. I'll only be a minute. I told you I had no time for a meeting, Commander. Well, you better make time. Sergeant McCall went to Internal Affairs. They're bringing me up on charges. The internal Affairs of your department is not judicial in nature. It's administrative. My office has no jurisdiction. Don't hand me that crap. You can help me, and you know it. Commander, my office is always open when an office needs help or advice, but as I just explained to you... Yeah, your advice is what got me into this mess. Now, wait a minute. I called you because a member of the judiciary was arrested. And as district attorney, I was trying to get at the facts. You called me because you were looking for a favor. Your exact words were, if I can get the charges against Judge Unger dropped, the governor would appreciate it. I keep very careful notes of my calls regarding matters like this. And I said nothing of the kind. Come off it, friend. I keep notes, too. Cool off, Commander. Try to remember this. The district attorney's office decides whether or not a criminal charge is filed against anyone. So just stay cool. If it becomes a criminal matter, you have a friend in me. garlic we could tie it around our necks That's a nice crow you got out there. It's a raven, my friend. Crows are in cornfields, ravens are in... Well, the ravens. How may I help you? Well, I got a friend who has a human skull with a, a dagger through one of the eyes. And does it have two intertwined snakes holding a single red stone? That's it, yeah. 
It's the eye into darkness. All priests of the inner court have one. Priests of the inner court? The sons and daughters of darkness. They are one of the oldest and most active of satanic cults. But you mean they worship Satan? Many do, but mainly it's a philosophical basis for a certain lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle? I would say a free one, liberated. Others might call it bizarre, even kinky. To each his own, I'd say. Well, what kind of people are these uh, sons and daughters of darkness? Membership is secret, very exclusive. Some are doctors, attorneys, other professionals. It's not a poor man's activity, you know. Some of the rituals are quite elaborate. And I might add, not inexpensive. If somebody had one of these uh, eye in the darkness skulls, would they be a member? It would only be an indication. Some of us are mainly students of the occult. I heard of a ceremony out in the desert a couple of weeks ago involving a lot of people, mostly men and women, and some very young girls. Your friend sounds like he's into a very heavy group. Two weeks ago was the annual celebration of the 13th moon. It calls for the sacrifice of the damned. Sometimes a young a woman. What are you saying? That sometimes these people use human sacrifices? One hears talk. I don't really know. Well, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. I'm here to serve. Why is everything so quiet? Commander Kane has resigned. I hope you're satisfied. I'm not going to go bow. Just uh, pick me up a couple minutes. I uh, asked for a transfer to the day shift. Give us more time together. That's, that's nice. I'd like that. Who's having a barbecue on Sunday? Think we could go? I've got the end of the month's summaries to write up. It would mean a lot to me, Lloyd. Okay, I'll try to get them done early. Good luck with your bowling. How many times I gotta tell you, Claire? When you're good, you don't need luck. Mrs. Fredericks is on her way to work. 
Suspect came out, kissed her goodbye in the doorway, and then went back inside. Probably the highlight of our night. Does the car have a full tank? Okay, have it ready for me in 20 minutes. Denley and Roswell. May they catch Fredericks in the act tonight. Here, here. You know, I had a funny thought about that guy. Hmm. This should be interesting. Well, it wasn't exactly funny. You know, sometimes you sound just like a woman. What if it's not him? Did you ever think of that? I mean, maybe we're following the wrong guy here. If I thought there was any possibility of that, I would insist you stay with me tonight. Oh, with me? Oh, please. When are you going to get off this macho kick and realize we're all cops around here, huh? You know, she's right. We're all cops. We've all had the same training. We're equals. Thank you. But only two of us are wearing pantyhose. Oh, to the moon, Alice. <laughs> you wearing pantyhose? <laughs> hey, Lieutenant, a soaking battery and a police officer. Forget about it, Navarro. You've already got the department involved in one lawsuit. Hey, I'm an innovative guy, Lieutenant. You've heard of alimony and palimony? Well, now I've introduced police ammonia. Hey, that's very good. When it's all over, maybe you'll still have a job ammonia. Or <laughs> oh, maybe you'll like this one better, Hunter. You remember that three-digit license possibility you requested on the blue Ford? Yes, I do. Well, they've come in. All 2,752 of them. The printout's waiting on your desk. Mm. Night, gang. 4 a.m. comes right after 3 a.m. Yeah, I can't wait to get back to my one-room suite overlooking the flood control channel. Uh, McCall, my invitation still stands, you know. Good night, Brad. Say good night, Gracie. See ya. Now, I'm going directly home. I will be there before you get home. When you get home, you call me or else. I'll call you. Drive carefully. Zebra 30, this is powder blue. Base 20. Anything starting? Negative powder blue. All's quiet. Okay. Give me a landline if anything happens, all right? Roger, powder blue.
time. Dial a cop. Hey, dial a cop. I just want to make sure you got home okay. I'm home safe and sound. Checked all my doors and windows. How about you? Uh, I checked in with Denley and Roswell. They say that Fredericks is still on his perch. Well, if he makes a move, give me a call. I'll be right over. Sometimes you say the sweetest things. Yes, I do, don't I? Good night. Night.